بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احببت في الله a very important issue that many of us some of our brothers and sisters are tested with and that is the issue of not being certain in acts of their worship meaning that they are overcome by the shaitan overcome by waswas you know those whisperings from the shaitan and whisperings from their own selves which distract them from their ibadah or they make them doubt with regards to their worship and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left us with a qaida azim azima a very important principle that i want us to learn if nothing else from what i'm about to share with you i want us to learn this because this if you practice this qaida and you learn this simple principle it will help you in all of your ibadah but you have to open your heart and you have to listen and you have to practice it very simple and it will help you with many questions in your religion in a hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a man came shukiya ila nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam rajulun yukhailu ilay annahu yajidu shay fi salat qala la tansaraf hatta hatta yasma'u sawtan aw yajidu rihan in this hadith that you'll find in bukhari and muslim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in the company of his companions and a man came and he was complaining to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said uh, he was complaining that in his prayer he finds something meaning that he believes he passed gas and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him the qaida alazim alzima qal la tansaraf hatta yasma sawtan aw yajidu rihan the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered the man by saying do not leave the prayer until or unless you hear something or you smell something ahabbat fillah what do we learn from this one of the things that we have to realize is it lets us know that if you feel you if you have waswas during your prayer and you believe maybe you pass gas during the prayer you feel something do not leave your prayer unless you're certain that you pass gas if you're for sure you know that you pass gas leave the prayer and go make wudu and then pray again but if as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned shukiya ila nabi so uh, uh, shukiya ila nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam rajulun that a man he doubted that means he had doubt it was from waswas that he broke his prayer So what did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam order him to do? He said, "Do not leave the prayer until or unless you smell something or you hear something." So if you do not hear something during your prayer, you you're doubtful. If you have doubt and you hear something, then leave the prayer. If you have doubt and you smell something, then leave the prayer. Simple. that we don't need to ask other question but I felt this and I I'm thinking this and I'm not sure about it no you have doubt you smelt something leave you have doubt you heard something leave the prayer bas that's it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us the dawabit he gave us those criterion alayhi salatu wassalam to help us in our ibadah ahabbat fi allah from this hadith let's look at what some of uh, ibn batal he said rahimahullah ta'ala in his explanation of this hadith he mentions a lot of fawaid so i have to mention some of them he said that the ulama they differed in in this regard but we just gave you the most correct view and he's going to get to that he said that uh it was related on uh from ibn qasim from malik imam malik rahimahullah ان من شك في في الحدث بعد تيقن الطهاره فعليه الوضوء that the person who has doubt with regards to their 
uh, after they were certain they made wudu. You're certain that you made wudu, but then you have doubt where you broke your wudu that they should make wudu. So they're saying what is safest. But that is not necessarily the most correct view. But it doesn't harm you if you have. But don't be was was, oh, I keep breaking my wudu. Oh, and going back and forth. Some people are tested like this. That they cannot even begin to pray because they've made wudu five, ten times. Because they think, oh, I felt something. Oh, I smell something. Or they in, within the salat, they break their salat multiple times. And this is a big mistake, and it's following the shaitan. The shaitan has overcome this person in their ibadah. So beware of that. Uh, and also, some of the ulama, they mention that it's better, but the real, most correct view is what the other, the majority of the scholars, or the other scholars, they mention that uh, this was related on Imam Malik. وَرُوِيًا an nafi an Malik أَنَّهُ la wudu alayh That this was uh, narrated on Nafi, uh, from Imam, um, from Imam Malik that there is no wudu for this person. This person does not have to make wudu. So that means if you have doubt, and as we mentioned, the hadith was clear from the Prophet ﷺ, but I'm just giving you some more benefit from the ulama. Also, qala uh, thawri wa abu hanifa wa ashabahu wa shafi'i this is, this is the most important. Now, this is the most correct view. Imam Abu Hanifa and his, uh, those who followed his madhab, and Imam Shafi'i, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, and Athawri, Sufyan Athawri, Rahimahullah, all these fuqaha, all of these great A'immat uh, sunnah that they said, Yabni ala yaqeenihi. So this is very important, that the person builds on your yaqeen. And this brings the qaida, the principle I'm going to uh, going to mention, that the ulama mentioned from this hadith, al yaqin la la yuzul shak la yuzul yaqin bi shak, that certainty is not removed by doubt. If you learn and understand that, you can practice that in all of your things, with your tawaf, with your rakat, and we're going to give you some examples. Uh, so it's not to be long, but the, the Imam, he mentioned some examples. He said in, in the wudu, so for example, let's just break it down so that we can understand it. Instead of translating, it's going to take time. So what the A'im say, and this is relevant for us, some examples. For example, the person who is going to their prey, they start praying, Allahu Akbar, they make takbir to ihram. They started praying. Then it comes to them, some waswas. Do I have wudu or not? Or even before, whether it's in the prayer or whether it's not in the prayer. The same issue. Maybe you're going to pray. Let's give the example you're going to pray. And you're not sure if you have wudu or not. You, you're certain that you made wudu for dhuhr. But you have doubt. Did I break my wudu or not? I don't remember if I went to the bathroom. I'm not really sure. In this case, you are on wudu. Pray your prayer and don't listen to the shaitan. Why? Because al yaqeen la yuzulu bi shak that certainty is not removed by doubtfulness. So, the fact that you were certain of your wudu, you remember the wudu, but you are doubting about whether you broke the wudu, then you're on wudu. Likewise, if you remember breaking your wudu, you remember, oh, I went to the restroom. I can't remember afterwards, did I make wudu? Then you don't have wudu. I hope that's clear. Very simple. Listen, understand this. This can help get rid of a lot of fitna. Another issue, habitifillah, some people during their prayer, they have this fitna. They're faced with this doubtfulness in the waswas. So they're not sure the number of rakat. And as Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i, and as they mentioned, that Yabni ala yaqeen, that we build upon what we're certain upon. So, if you're not sure, did I make three rakat or is this my last rakat? Is this four for dhuhr or asr or isha? You're not sure. Is it three or four? Mabni ala yaqeen, then you build upon what you're certain. If you're doubtfulness about three or four, that means you're sure you did three and you're unsure you did four. So that means you're on three and then you pray your last rakah, four.
Likewise, whether it's uh, any prayer, it's, it's the same. Yabni or mabni ala yaqeen. And doubtfulness does not remove certainty. So build your religion upon certainty. If you are making tawaf around the Kaaba and you're not sure if this is five or six tawaf, then you build upon yaqeen. You're certain that it's five, but you're unsure that it's six. So then this is your fifth one. Or, or you, you've done your fifth, you're going to start your sixth. I hope that's clear and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.